After Spurs lost Harry Kane to Bayern Munich, they were fearing the absolute worst, but arguably they're doing better without him. With Postacoglu at the helm, they are currently inside the top six, fighting for a UCL spot. But Spurs haven't won a single trophy in over 15 years, and we all know how I feel about that. As I've said, guys, Postacoglu is doing a great job at Spurs, but if they want to be winning trophies left, right, and centre, there's only one man that can do it. And guys, I cannot believe what I'm about to say. For the next 10 seasons, I'm going to become the new manager at Tottenham Hotspur. The goal is to end their 15-year drought of silverware by winning them as many trophies as humanly possible and ultimately make them Europe's most dominant club. But the wheel is going to be there every season to make my life easier or a thousand times more difficult. So ladies and gents, this is the Tottenham Hotspur side I have loaded into and annoyingly, it is actually really good. I mean, you've got players like Christian Romero, Vissario, James Madison and of course, your Minso. They've also got a lot of good youngsters too, like Mickey van der Ven, like Papa Matarsa, and of course, fullback Destiny Adogi. And what's actually crazy about Spurs, out of 40 players, only three of them are 30 years old or above. Honestly, guys, it's really annoying to say this, but they have got a really good setup. And to top it off, we've got a great budget to start off with 107 mil to begin our journey with Tottenham Hotspur. Now, if you guys remember, last week, Arsenal took that top spot on the leaderboard with 24 trophies. So if we want to go top with Tottenham Hotspur, that is the trophy count that we've got to beat. The question is though guys, for the next 10 seasons, is this team capable of winning that amount of trophies to surpass Arsenal when in real life they can't even win one? Well guys, we're going to find out as the first thing we're doing is switching the formation to the 4-2-1-3 formation. This doesn't really make sense to you right now, but I promise you in a second it will. As for the tactical vision, we're rocking the Gagan Press once again. We've all seen how young this Spurs side is and we're going to take full advantage of that. And after meddling with the team a bit, this is the strongest start in 11 that we can field right now. And the reason I've chosen this formation, we've got a CDM, we've got a centre mid and a cam in our midfield trio. We've literally got a role for every type of centre midfielder. And don't forget, we've got a hundred odd million yet to spend this season, but then again, maybe not because we haven't yet spun that wheel. We all know that that wheel can turn our season upside down. So here we go, season one. What is the wheel going to give us this time? What is this? A decent one for for a change, your choice, make two players 18 years old again or add an additional 100 million to your budget. Oh my god, for once we actually get a good one to start things off. The great thing about that, this team's already incredibly young on average, so making it even younger is always going to benefit the squad. And after really thinking about it, I think making Christian Romero and Hyun Min Son 18 years old once again is absolutely the right move to make going forward. I mean, Romero's an absolute baller for Tottenham Hotspur in real life, so this one makes perfect sense. As for for Hyun Min Son, well this is a no brainer really, is absolutely fantastic and honestly one of the only Spurs players I actually like. And the wheel didn't say anything about not making signings so we've got a hundred odd million to spend on improving the team and honestly I feel like we just need a striker. I mean yes, Richarlison is a half decent player but if we want to be winning trophies left, right and centre with Tottenham Hotspur I'm not going to rely on this guy up top to get us goals. Instead I'm going to bring Dusan Vlavic into the team, he's only 23, he's 84 rated, he's kind of a similar play to Harry Kane as well. Not the fastest in the world, but he definitely knows where the back of the net is. And 70 million pounds later, Dusan Vlavic now plays for Tottenham Hotspur. But as well as signing Vlavic, I'm also going to try and loan out all these players on the transfer list. And you'll notice they've all got one thing in common. They're all ridiculously young, but not quite good enough to get into the team yet. As for our remaining budget, we've got 29 million left to spend, but I'm not going to spend that on players. I'm going to spend it on a lot of players' contracts, giving them lengthy deals and also on our coaching system. Which means, ladies and gents, this is how Tottenham Hotspur line up going into season one of this 10 season takeover. Now remember, in order to go top of the leaderboard, this Tottenham Hotspur side has to win more than 24 trophies. And honestly, I don't think they're capable of doing that. But because we've signed Uzan Vlajevic this season, an out and out goal scorer, apart from me, does feel like we do have a pretty decent chance of winning a lot of silverware with Tottenham Hotspur. And guys, I was bang on the money. We have won Tottenham Hotspur, the Premier League title in only season one by 12 points in the end as well and we're really five points on making Tottenham Hotspur Centurions. I'm so conflicted the competitive side of me really wants Spurs to do well but the other part of me absolutely hates this. Guys this is mental we've also won the FA Cup. 
And we've won the Carbar Cup, so that's the treble in season one. This is actually boring, man. What the hell is going on? And just take a look at these stats, guys. Madis, Kulisevsky, Vlajevic, and Son all getting more than 20 goal contributions individually. And honestly, now that Hyun Min Son's young again, now providing we keep until the end of this takeover, I think he's going to win everything. He's going to be the top goal scorer and top assist. But let me know who you think it's going to be in the comments. We are off to a great start with Tottenham Hotspur, but these nine seasons to go. So the question question is, guys, can this team keep it up and will that wheel allow us to keep it up? Well, we got off to a good start in Season 1 with this wheel. Can we keep it going in Season 2? What the hell is this? Put your starting 11 on a wheel, spin it three times and give a 3-plus boost in rating to whoever it lands on. That is fantastic. We're going to get straight into this, guys. Who's the first player getting an upgrade? Who's it going to be? Hoibia or Adogi? Adogi is getting a plus 3 increase in his rating. Who's going to be joining him is the question on my man Kulisevsky is going to be joining him. That's freaking massive. Third and final spin, Adogi, Kulisevsky and Vissario. So a goalkeeper fullback and a right wing back. I mean, that is just beautiful, isn't it? And as you can see, guys, it's done. Kulisevsky's 88 overall. Vissario is now 90 rated and Adogi is now 90 rated. This guy is only 21 years old as well, man. We've got the best fullback on the game right now. And we've got 200 million in our budget, which we are allowed to spend because the wheel didn't say anything about making no signings. And I think we put that money into bringing in a better centre mid than Bentancourt and a better defensive midfielder than Hoibier. I mean, if you look around the team as a whole, it's an incredibly young and high potential squad, but Hoibier and Bentancourt are 27 and 28, so I feel like we need to keep that theme running in our team. And to kick things off, Kamavinga is my first transfer target. Only 21, 84 rated. And with us winning the treble last season, I actually feel like we could make this happen. And I feel like we can definitely make this happen too. Pablo Gavi is only 19, 84 rated himself. Currently playing at Juve, but we stole one of their best players last year. We're going to do the exact same this year too. And there we go, guys. £145 million pounds later, we signed both of these players on five-year deals. I'm not used to this in takeovers, man. Look at the state of this team going into season two. By this point, we've either had to release our best players, decrease our best players' overalls, or for that matter, give our best players to our biggest rivals. But right now, that wheel is really on our side. And with the signings of Gavi and Kamavinga, who knows what we're capable of achieving this season when last year with a weaker side, we won the treble. Well, I'll tell you what we're capable of winning back-to-back -back titles. Not as convincing this time, though. Only three points ahead of Manchester City. We also beat them to win the Community Shield. And we've once again won the FA Cup. Guys, this is actually a joke, man. Six trophies in two seasons already. What the hell are they feeding Tottenham Hotspur in this game? But our winning streak comes to an end as United knock us out of the Carabao Cup in round three. It's actually hard to believe this is the first competition we've actually not won so far. But this is more like the Tottenham Hotspur that I know. We finished third in Group F and the UCL when Benfica and RB Salzburg were in it. How the hell did we not finish top of this group? We do just about make it past FC Michelin though in the preliminary round in the Europa League. Wouldn't it be something if we actually went on to win this instead? And we almost actually did it. Juve beat us in the final 2-1. I'm not going to say it. I am not gonna say it. And looking at this team, it is legitimately killing me not seeing it. Because how the hell does this team not beat Juve? The one positive is Vlavic is a goal machine. 45 goal contributions in 61 games. We definitely found a suitable replacement for Harry Kane, didn't we? But guys, with Tottenham Hotspur of all teams, we've got six trophies in two seasons, man. But the bad news is we've yet to encounter a bad option on that wheel. And sooner or later, it's gonna happen. This team hasn't faced any adversity yet. So when we do eventually face that adversity, it's going to be very interesting to see how this team copes with it. But is it going to be season three where this wheel makes our lives a little bit more tricky? What is this? This is new. No trophies, no players. For every trophy you don't win this season, release your highest rated players in order. Okay, yeah, this is going to be a bit tricky. Now, granted, our record so far with Spurs is fantastic, but if we lose just one competition, Vlavic is the first player on the chopping block, and we all know how crucial he is to the squad. Then it'd be either Vissario, Adogi or Son and then Kulisevsky. We simply can't afford that. We need to make sure this team is absolutely world class so we win everything this year. Luckily we do have a very good budget just under 200 million. Obviously the odds are very much against us but we can definitely make something happen with this kind of money. But you've got to remember guys this team has got back to back trebles and I've learned from past experiences if it isn't broke don't fix it. So instead I'm just going to sign backups for players that we may 
have to release at the beginning of Season 4. Now, for Dusan Flavic, we've got Valiz and we've got Richarlison, so we don't have to bother about getting a striker. But our wingers aren't really up to scratch if we do have to release either Kulisevsky or Hyunbin Sun, so we are going to bring in a winger. And whilst Vizario is one of the best keepers in the world right now, the other two definitely aren't, so we are going to be bringing in a keeper as well. But we are going to start by bringing in a winger, and Ferran Torres is the player I've chosen. He's only 25, 87 overall. If we have to release either Kulisevsky or Son, he can definitely fill in their shoes, and for 100 million, he is now signed for us. And following him is Onana from United, 29, 84 overall. I didn't want to go for a keeper too good, just in case we don't end up releasing Vissario. And for 31.8 million, he no longer plays for Manchester United, he now plays for Tottenham Hotspur. Now I've just counted, guys, we're in five competitions this year, which means at the beginning of season four, there's a very solid chance we could be releasing five of our best players. But up to this point, with no pressure, these guys have got back-to-back -back trebles. The question is, when pressure's actually applied to these guys, are they gonna step up to the occasion, or are they gonna do what they're most known for and bottle it? But to my surprise, guys, we've actually won our third title in a row, 11 points clear of Manchester City. I'm not getting my hopes up, though. We've got to win four more competitions to get off scot-free. But hang on a minute, we've also won the Community Shield, beating Man City on penance to do it, so maybe we are a little bit better than I thought. Then again, maybe not. Round three, we get knocked out of the FA Cup by Liverpool, so that's one player at least we've got to release. And Accrington Stanley knock us out of the Carabao Cup in round three, so that's our two highest rated players gone already. Accrington Stanley, though, really spears, really? But at the very least, guys, we are out of the group stage in the Champions League, and that wasn't exactly an easy group to get out of. But Bayern have knocked us out in the quarters, 8-7 on penalties. Come on, Spurs, really? So out of the five competitions we won two of, and meaning three players are gonna get released. So Vlavic and either Vasario, Adogi, and Hyun Min Son are on the chopping block. Oh God, I just knew it was gonna happen this season, man. We got off way too scot-free with that wheel. And look at the stats as well. Vlavic once again banging goals in left, right, and center. Kulisevsky's the same, so is Son, and Madison as well. I'm actually gutted about this, man. Vasario Mario, Adogi, and Son are on the chopping block. Two of them are going to get released, so it looks like it's up to the wheel to decide who's going to be the two. I honestly don't know who I want to keep, man. They're all a bit of an L, whoever we lose. Adogi, man. Oh, he's the best left back in the game as well. So now it's down to Vasario and your men's son. Of course it was going to be Son, the guy that we made 18 again in season one. We've got to release him. Probably some other team like Barcelona or Juve is going to snap him up for free. I'm going to miss these guys so, so much, man, but at the very least, we do have a world-class keeper still in between the sticks. But without Hyunmin Son, Vlaovic, and also Adogi in the starting 11 next year, and also with us not knowing what the wheel's gonna give us, it's gonna make season four incredibly interesting. But before we find out what the wheel gives us next season, if you're enjoying this takeover so far, make sure you leave this video a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. So, ladies and gents, it's the moment of truth, season four, and it's a bad one. Costly errors, what the hell is this? Release your three high Rated players and replace them with free agents only. Oh my god, we've just released our three highest rated players. You want us to release more? I said this once, I said this a million times. This wheel can suck a fat one. And just look who the three highest rated players are, man. Madison, Kulisevsky, and Vasaru. The player who last year the wheel spared isn't going to get spared this season, unfortunately. And just look at the start in 11. Now that we've released all those three players, it's just dawned on me as well. In the span of a month, we've released six of our highest rated players. That wheel is well and truly shafted us. And to top it off, we've got 212 million to spend, but we can only use this money on three free agents. So he is hoping that we can find some bloody good free agents. Now guys, I've just looked through this free agents list extensively. And let me tell you something, it is dead. There's not even any high rated center forwards. That's how bad it is. I mean, these were the three highest rated players we could find. Den Donker, Karazit, and Dashna. I mean, how rotten has my lot been the past two years? But we have to do what the wheel says so we have signed all three of these players up on a permanent deal. Now it's time to see how Tottenham Hotspur do after releasing their six highest rated players. Now I have to be honest, I expected way worse. We are actually second in the Premier League, only one point behind the win is Newcastle United. Shout out to you lot for winning the title. But we did end up losing the Community Shield. West Ham beat us 4-2 on Penos. And Man City knocked us out of the FA Cup in round three. Guys, this is not looking good so far, is it? And Chelsea also knocked us out of the Carabao Cup in round three. Oh my god, this 
is going to be our first trophy of the season, isn't it? But apparently not. We've won the Champions League by beating Milan on penalties. Of all trophies to win this year, I did not expect it to be the UCL. I have to admit, I'm impressed. This team lost its six highest rated players in the span of a month, and we still pulled off a massive dub by winning the UCL. That's ridiculous, to be fair. And to be fair, so are the stats with Brennan Johnson, Richarlison, Gavi, Ferran Torres, all really stepping up to the plate. But one more thing I need to tell you guys, I sent Valise out on loan to Wolves this year and just look at that improvement, 86 overall right now. Granted, we don't have Vlavic anymore and Richarlison did do well this year, but I feel like we have to throw this guy in the starting 11 now. So far, that wheel has really done a number on us, but this Spurs team, fair play to it, it's got resiliency and it has overcome its adversity so far, but can we keep this going with Tottenham Hotspur? It's indeed time to find out because on the wheel, there's three good options and three bad. Oh my God, what's this one? Bad trade. Swap your three highest rated players for the three worst players in your league and make no other signings. That is nine of our best players that we are going to lose in the span of two seasons. This wheel is a joke. So that means, guys, Pedro Porro, Pablo Gavi, and either Christian Romero, Eduardo Camavinga, and Ferran Torres are all getting swapped for the Premier League's worst three players. This wheel can go to hell. And just look at the three ways players are. Rob McKay, 61 rated, playing for Villa. You've got Daniel Faulkner, who's 59 rated, playing for the Blades. And Preston North End's David Cole, 19 years old, 55 rated. How can you be that bad and playing in the Prem, man? That just doesn't make sense. But it's established, guys, that Pedro Porro and Gavi are leaving the team. But out of Romero, Camavinga and Torres, it's not to me, it's up to the wheel. Let's be honest, no matter who it lands on, it's a loss. Camavinga. It. We bought him in like season two or one. He's been so good for us. And now we're going to swap him for one of the worst players in the prep. And just like that, the deed is done. We have once again lost three of our highest rated players, but in turn this time gaining three of the worst players in the Premier League. And now the team looks like they're heading into season five. And somehow it doesn't actually look that bad. I mean, remember guys, we've lost nine of our highest rated players in the span of two seasons now, if I'm not mistaken. And still Spurs do loot this good. Honestly, fair play to them for having this amount of depth. But we really need our high traded players to step up to the plate like Mickey van der Ven, like Ferran Torres, like Christian Romero. We need these guys to carry the boatload. Otherwise, we're in for a very unsuccessful season five. And it looks like we're heading that way, guys. We are third in the Premier League. That's our worst finish in the Prem, actually, so far in this entire takeover. We did also make the semis of the FA Cup. Bloody Wolves got the better of us. And Aston Villa knocked us out to the quarters in the Carbar Cup. We're getting so close to the final, but we're just falling short. But we did win the Super Cup, beating Leverkusen 2-1, so at least we have won one trophy. As for the Champions League, we've been gripped for the second goddamn time in this takeover. We do go to the Europa League, but this just isn't good enough. We did, however, make the quarters of the Europa League, but Arsenal knocked us out 4-2. Again, getting close to the final, but falling short. And it is safe to say our front three carried us this year. 32-5 and five for Torres, 24-3 and three for Aleo Valise, and 16-6 and six for Brennan Johnson. But there is good news. Going into next season, there's not that much of an age issue that we do have to sort out yet. So going into season six, we're pretty sound regardless of what that wheel does. But after five seasons, we've somehow won 10 trophies with Tottenham Hotspur, which means for the remaining five, Five seasons, all we've got to do is win 15 trophies and we go top of the leaderboard with Spurs. And I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I think this Spurs team can do it. The team looks this good after the last three seasons. Who knows how good it'll look after the next five. Now, at the end of last season, I forgot to mention to you guys that we sent Alfie Devine on loan for a year and look at him now, 85 overall. You can see that I've not messed with his overall. I've not done anything to him. This guy is definitely going in the starting 11 now. But as you can see from the start, 11. Whilst our midfield up looks absolutely unstoppable, our defence does need a little bit of work. I mean, our left back and right back, Semerson Royale and Ryan Sessegnon, for God's sake. In this season, we've got the highest budget we've had so far, just under half a billion. I am praying to God that we'll land on something good, man. We need this this season. And as you can see from the wheel, there is more good on this than bad. Vowel movement, what the hell is that? Only sign plays whose surname begins with A E I O or you are. Do you know what, Wheel? That is just such good wordplay. The good news is, guys, we can finally spend money, and one thing that we do need to spend it on is a second keeper, because as you can see, Onana is the only 
goalkeeper we've got, so if he gets injured, we are genuinely screwed. I'm also bringing in younger midfielders than Bentoncourt and Hoybier. I mean, they're both in their 30s now. They're brilliant players, don't get me wrong, but they're not going to last like that for much longer. And we all know that we've got no financial difficulties. The big question is, who the hell am I going to bring in? Now, believe it or not, guys, not many amazing players' names begins with a vowel, so this was a lot trickier than I thought it was. Luckily, I have found two players I can bring in. One of which is a goalkeeper which we desperately need, Jan Oblak. He's 35 granted, but he's 88 overall, and he actually goes into the starting 11 over Onana. And I'm dead happy about this one. Destiny Adogi is currently playing at Arsenal, but don't worry, you Tottenham Hotspur fans, that is going to get sorted out straight away. And £200 million later, we have signed players that actually improved the team this time. But are the signings of Jan Oblak and Destiny Adogi good enough to get Spurs back on track to how they used to be back in season one or two, or is it going to be the exact same as last year and only winning one trophy? Well, it's not a good start, guys. We are second in the Premier League once again, 11 points behind Manchester City. It's going to take some doing to win this title again, isn't it? And we once again made the FA Cup semis, losing to Arsenal, man. We just can't make the final of anything anymore, can we? And we've once again finished in the quarters of the Carabao Cup as well. Man City this time knocking us out. Guys, I don't want to say it, but they're doing something remarkably similar to what they do in real life. And I'll give you three guesses what it is. But I've got to take that back. We've won the UCL with Tottenham Hotspur for the second time in this video, beating Manchester City 3-1 to do it. At the very least, it looks like a doggy helped us to win the Champions League, but we do need to win a lot more than just one trophy season from now until the end of this takeover if we want to get to the top of that leaderboard. But it looks like Ferran Torres is going to be topping the goal-scoring leaderboard because look at his stats, man. 38 goals, 14 assists in 59 games. What a signing he's turned out to be. I've got to admit, though, guys, we've got an age situation now. A lot of our players are entering their mid-30s, so one way or another, at some point in the next couple of seasons, we've got to sort this out. But is the wheel going to be kind of let us sort it out this season, or is it going to be a season 8, 9, or 10 job? What is broke for the next five seasons of your budget? Oh, honestly, this wheel can get to heck. We did have 400-odd million, but now we've got 230-odd. I mean, it's still a very healthy amount of money, but I wouldn't have minded 400-odd million. But we've got to look at the bigger picture, guys. We can finally sort this age issue out. Now, Andre Onana, I'm actually going to leave him alone because he's got two more years left in him at least. However, Hoybier and Bentoncourt, we have to be looking for players in their positions who are younger than them, despite Bentoncourt being 89 rated now. Aside from those positions, to be fair, the age problem isn't actually as bad as it looks. So you will have noticed Giovanni Lo Celso is on loan. This is just to make sure that Divan gets all the game time this year and it's not shared between the two. But for the first time in quite a while, we've got a lot of money to spend with no restrictions, so we're going to have some fun with this. Now, guys, I'm thinking about getting the band back together. Pablo Gavi still plays for Sheffield United, and look at him, man. 91 overall, 24 years old. If we can bring him back to Spurs, our midfield would be sorted. But instead of Camavinga, I'm going for Tushimeni instead. He's 29, 89 overall. I know that he's older than Camavinga, but that means he'll be a bit cheaper and therefore a little bit more affordable. And 90 million pounds later, guys, Tushimeni now plays for Tottenham. Hotspur. Now we just need to try and get Pablo Gavi to come back. But this ain't going to be easy. He's worth 127 and a half million. So this means our offer has got to be at least 160. So I'm going to put Rodrigo Bentancourt in this deal alongside 80 million. I mean, it's not quite 160 million, but it's still a goddamn good offer. Are the Blades going to accept it though? That's the question they have. That is absolutely fantastic. Thank God for that. And there he is, guys, in the Tottenham Hotspur sheet. We brought him back where he belongs. But we still have 60 million in our budget and there is one other position we could improve with this money. Our right back role where Emerson Royale is the weakest link in the entire starting 11. He's a decent player, don't get me wrong, but when you compare him to the rest of the team, I mean he definitely lets it down and with 60 million, I reckon we can definitely try to bring someone better in. And I think I found his replacement, guys. Javier Cabrera, he's a very versatile 21 year old. He's 84 rated. I mean, this guy looks like a beast. And that is officially our transfer window done as we've just spent 50 million on Javier Cabrera. And that means our team looks
looks like this going into season seven. And surely to God this year, we've got to win more than one trophy. I mean, we've got a far better right back than Emerson Royale. Our midfield duo is absolutely fantastic. There's no reason why we can't at least win the treble. And guys, this is a great start. We've won the title once again in very convincing fashion. 16 points clear at Manchester City. I need to stop getting happy about this. I keep forgetting I'm in charge of bloody Tottenham Hotspur. As for the FA Cup, Man City did get their revenge on us as they knocked us out in the quarters. But we did win the Carabao Cup, beating Nottingham Forest to do it. And we've once again won the Super Cup, beating Juve to do it, so we've won three trophies this season now. And guys, it was so close to being the quadruple. Arsenal beat us in the UCL final. I'm not going to say it, but you guys already know what I'm thinking. But Jesus, look at these stats, man. I'll be real with you lot. I don't like Tottenham Hotspur, but I cannot deny how impressive that actually is. We're only in charge of Spurs for three more seasons, and honestly, the team's still pretty young. It's still growing, and it's still winning a lot of trophies. And granted, right now, we are 11 points still behind Arsenal, but in those three seasons, who knows what can happen? Well, we're at least going to find out what's going to happen in Season 8. We've landed on a good one. What is this, G slash A? If your attack is in the start of 11, do not get more than 35 goal contributions each they get a minus three in their rating but if they do they get a plus three that is actually pretty stylish and it said nothing about not making any signings so we've got 96 million to spend after we chop the budget and off now i'm not going to touch the starting 11 because quite honestly i feel like this team is pretty damn good already i'm going to focus my attention on what we're lacking on the bench and as you can see what we're lacking is a center back because apart from that all the other positions are pretty decent so i'm going to go for mika marmel from Mar say he's 29 85 overall and his contract running out and we all know how much i love a bargain and following him is goalkeeper leonard burger he's only 19 83 overall i noticed that Jan black's near in retirement now so it doesn't help to get prepared for that and for the total amount of 82.2 million pounds we have brought both of these players in on a permanent deal there's no question we've got solid depth in our team with the signings of these two players but will this take us to the next level i certainly think they've improved the team because look at this we've once again won the premier league title by 22 points that is actually ridiculous we've also beaten man city to win the community shield and we've won the fa cup beating bournemouth to do it but we lost to arsenal in the carabao cup i don't feel like it's fair to actually say what i'm thinking because we've legitimately won three trophies this season but it's unfortunately is going to stay that way as man city knocked us out of the quarters 11 10 on penalties in the ucl oh my god but Trophies win the only thing that we needed this year. We needed our front three to get the bare minimum 35 goal contributions each. Otherwise, they'll get a minus three in their rating. So hopefully they've all come in clutch for me. You're kidding me, aren't you? Brennan Johnson was the only player in the front frigging four not to get 30 goal contributions. Divine got 32 from the cam roll. Johnson, come on, man. You're laying the team down. I feel so sorry for Valise though, man. He got 47 goal contributions in 59 games, but he's taking the hit purely because of Johnson. But despite our front three's overalls being decreased by a three, look at the state of the team overall, man. I feel like the last two seasons are going to be very interesting, especially when you consider what's left on the wheel, the really good one and the really bad one. It's the really bad one, if it's what I think it is. Give your three highest rated players to Chelsea, Arsenal and West Ham and make no signings. I bloody knew this was coming at some point. It's come at the worst possible time as well. So it looks like Destiny Adogi is once again leaving the club. I can't keep him to save me life, can I? But the other two slots are between Christian Romero, Mickey van der Ven, Pablo Gavi, and also Alejo Valiz. I mean, none of these players are decent to lose, are they? But I suppose one way or the other, we've got to go through with this. So let's go, Wheel. We already know that Adogi's leaving. Who is leaving as well? Christian Romero. I mean, I suppose that's not that bad in the grand scheme of things. The one player I don't want to lose lose is Valise, man. Oh my god, I shouldn't have said anything. We're actually losing him. He's been so, so good for us since coming into the start in 11. Oh my days, that wheel can go to hell. But that leaves me with a big decision to make. Where do I send Alejo Valise? Where do I send Christian Romero? And also, where do I send Destiny Adogi? So let's start with Valise, guys. We sent him to the Hammers. I really don't want one of the best strikers in the world playing for Arsenal in Chelsea, given the strength of their squad. As for Romero, well, I've sent him to Chelsea because I've I feel like if this happened in real life, it'd be a little bit better if he joined Chelsea than he did Arsenal. That means that Adogi has indeed gone to Arsenal. To be honest, there was no right or wrong answer here, man. They're all pretty bad options. And because we're not allowed to make any signings, this is how the team lines up going into the ninth season.
version of this takeover and honestly I don't think it's that bad at all. I mean our defence has defo seen better days and our striker is absolutely bloody woeful in comparison to what we used to have but I do believe there's still enough strength in this team to win a bit of silverware this year too. And what did I tell you guys we've once again won the Premier League title by 8 points this time too. And we've also won the Community Shield. We didn't win the FA Cup however Stoke City made sure of that in round 4. And Leicester City knocked us out on penalties in round 4 of the Carabao Cup. I promise you guys I'm not going to say it. But this is taking the mick a bit. Real Madrid knocked us out in quarters on penalties. Do you know what guys? Screw it. This warrants it. Tottenham Hotspur your bottle jobs in season 9. I mean looking at the stats it's pretty obvious that our Cam and Wingers did their job but Richarlison definitely didn't do his. I mean he is 35 years old. Losing Velez this season really did shaft us. But as you can see from the leaderboards we are trailing Arsenal by 5 trophies so in season 10 we are going to have to pull off an absolute miracle to even match them now. But the wheel could give us a miracle in season 10. There's only one thing left on it and that is the very very good one. And it says either make a play in 99 rated or sign 3 players of your choice with unlimited budget. I don't think it's necessary to make anyone 99 rated but I don't mind bringing players in with unlimited budgets. As for who those 3 players could be well I don't know about you guys but I'm feeling a little bit nostalgic. I feel like getting the band back together. That's right ladies and gentlemen, Destiny Adogi, Alejo Valiz and also Christian Romero are coming back to Tottenham Hotspur, man. I didn't want to release them when I did, but you better believe now that I've got the chance to bring them back, I'm taking it. But ladies and gents, bringing the band back together wasn't cheap in the slightest. We spent £620 million to bring these three players back to Tottenham Hotspur, but you know what? It was worth every single penny. Now, there will be some of you surprised that I haven't brought Hyun Min Sun back into the team, but with how well Ferran Torres has been playing, I just couldn't just Justified. But now that that's all taken care of, this is the final starting 11 going into the final season of this takeover. And honestly, with what's at stake, I genuinely feel like this team can pull it off. Remember, guys, we need four trophies to match Manchester United and five to match Arsenal. It's a tall task, but I definitely feel like it's achievable with the squad we've got right now. And so far, we're ending the takeover on a high note. We are once again Premier League champions. One point off being Centurions, man. This team ran right in England this year. We've also won the Community Shield, so that's trophy number two. And we've won the FA Cup, that's three trophies. And we've won the Carabao Cup, that's four trophies in season 10. And that means we've now officially match Manchester United's trophy record we need one more to match Arsenal's and it's a great start in the UCL we've topped group H with flying colours and it gets even better we've smashed AC Milan 6-4 in the round of 16 and we've destroyed Man U in the quarters 5-2 and we've beaten Man City in the semis 5-4 we're playing Dortmund in the final all we got to do now is beat Dortmund to match Arsenal I can't believe it we did all that we won everything in England to choke to Dortmund in the Champions League final honestly Honestly, FC24 is actually kind of realistic because this is what Spurs are doing in real life. They fully bottled it. Come on, man. There's no excuse why this team hasn't beaten Dortmund, man. There's only one player in the entire starting 11 who's not 90 overall. And look at these stats, for goodness sake. The least, Johnson, Torres, Divine, even a doge again on the score sheet. Look at Gavi getting 15 assists as well. I honestly can't get over how realistic that is. When the time comes for Spurs to actually put a performance in, they absolutely bottle it. I know Chelsea aren't that good right now, but at least we've won stuff when it counts. But moving on to the overall stats of this takeover, Ferran Torres was both our top goal scorer and assist and as you guys know, we won 23 trophies in 10 seasons. And that means we just fall short and matching Arsenal joint top of the leaderboard, we are instead joint second with Manchester United. Let me know in the comments section who I should do a takeover with next because Arsenal are top of the leaderboard and so far it doesn't look like anybody's going to beat them. But ladies and gents, we're going to leave the takeover there. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, leave a like on this video smash that subscribe button if you want to see another takeover that I've done just click right here to watch me do this with Manchester United.